Good morning. Uh, it's been a while and I just thought this morning I felt like um, after doing my yoga and a bit of meditation I thought I remembered how much I used to love um, just doing a sketch at the start of the day as well and just how it made me feel um, I suppose that I had already achieved something and engaging that creative element early on in the day seems to um, kind of bring me back home to myself a little bit more. And I miss you actually, connecting with all of you. So here goes. I'm going to paint this cyclamen that I got from Joyce. And this is kind of a yoga altar that I've set up in the morning. I like to put things together that I quite like. And I suppose that's another kind of engage, engage in the flow thing. Um, I'm doing a talk on engaging the flow soon. And I, that's what I'm all about at the moment. Kind of, it's, it's just dating in me what to say. <laughs> Um, anyway, putting things together that you like, the feel of, the incense, the smell of, um, and the sweet peas here from the garden are gorgeous as well, they smell lovely. Maybe I'll paint them another morning. Um, anyway, okay, I'll get on with that. I was actually going to paint those sweet peas as part of, um, oh Jesus, there you go. Well, par for the course, wouldn't it? It wouldn't be, it wouldn't be, um, it wouldn't be one of my videos without some sort of collapse happening. There we are. Hopefully that's it now. I'm sitting on the lead of the microphone, so it's probably have to... Okay. Yeah, so... You know, I'm just going to make a start with these pens. And I guess you know how much I love Cyclamen if you've watched any of the videos. I've done already. Um you'll know that I feel really inspired by these lovely dancing flowers. I love the way that they kind of look as though they're about to take off into flight. And how there's them, um, not quite the colour I'm wanting now. Sure. And they're about to take off into flight. And I love the gap between the cyclamen flowers and the leaves below. I'm just kind of steadying myself now. Yeah, I've had a few late nights and kind of, actually for the first time in a long time, late mornings, like sleeping in really late. And uh, while it's nice now and again to have given myself permission to do that, I know that uh, in general I want to have you know, to, I suppose, to kind of really use the time that I'm here <laughs> and not to be inside in bed all the time. That's a bit of an exaggeration, though. But, you know, I want to kind of um, live, I guess. <laughs> mm. Okay, so just some sort of shapes there. I'm trying to find the general shapes that the flowers together make. And uh, I almost feel like using my left hand here so they don't become too involved in it. But it's nice and light and I holding the pen loosely like this means that um, I keep a kind of a looseness to it. Uh, and there. Yeah. And at this point now I think I'm going to introduce some watercolour paint. Oh. My screen there. Somebody borrowed my palette. Ian, actually, if you're listening, borrowed my palette at the last workshop. And he ended up kind of filling it with his colours. And so there's this nice, um, to show you here. Well, there, kind of a greenish colour that works for the cyclamen. I don't know what it is. So to show you better. Not really green, but it's very good for cyclamen leaves. I like to do that sometimes to hold the, the paper or the palette up to um, the things I'm painting so that I can see the colour I'm aiming for as I'm making it. I also quite like being at arm's length from the work, working from the shoulder for the same reason as holding the pen loosely at the end. You know, 
holding the board far away from me means that I can work from the shoulder in fairly big sweeping statements rather than only from the wrist. There's something quite freeing in that. And like Paul Klee says, make chance essential. So it kind of allows you to make chance essential when you've got a little bit of a restriction on your, well, not a restriction on your movement, actually the opposite. When you've got freedom of movement, there's more capacity to make grander gestures and bigger shapes that are um, that have the possibility for more chance effects. So I'm just finding the darkest leaves as I move around like stepping stones and printing the brush where I want it to be darkest. Pressing the brush down and lifting means that the paint runs in that space. Okay. Checking your time. Now with my eyes half closed, yeah, I think I'm gonna just be a bit more dynamic there and do find some more colour too because uh, while that green is nice, I think there needs to be also something a little bit exciting in there, like maybe some Prussian blue. I think that's what that is. Surely in blue, maybe even possibly turquoise. Yeah. Okay. And now some alizarin, alizarin crimson. To show you what's happening on the paper there. It kind of feels exciting. As soon as the flow comes in, the flow of the water comes in, it makes it a little bit more um, gratifying or something. I'm about to run out of time now. No, I've got one minute. Ages. Okay. So, just finding the bottom of the six month flowers with this alizarin crimson watercolour. I'm trying to keep the shape of them. After you're gone, I might do a little bit more. And if you're on the Facebook group page, I'll post it, the end result, on there. And in case I don't get a chance to say goodbye, I'm just going to say goodbye now. Bye. And uh, join in another day. Okay, see ya. Maybe paint a plant or a flower that's in front of you. Just going to do some terracotta for that pot. If I had a bit more time and some glue and things, I'd probably and use collage for this part. It's quite nice to find different ways of describing things. Then again, the pens would be good enough too.